Next, moving on from that, we have this interesting development courtesy of Printworks. They really know how to flip in, drag out a closing because it feels like they've been talking about closing for fucking years. They finally close. Then they decide they're not closed and they're staying open. So I bought one of the quote unquote last tickets or last event, which was a Dixon all nighter. He then goes and plays there another time anyway. So he did, it wasn't his last time. Fucking annoying. They finally do close. They have a really big bonanza ending party. They have bicep playing. It's fucking amazing. Sick, super sick visuals. Everyone had a good time. And then they announced right after the fact, oh, we're going to reopen again in 2026, guys. So it's never really closed. It's kind of temporarily closed, but they really are doing a good job of fucking dragging it out. And talking about dragging it out, look at what they've done here. Courtesy of Instagram, they've got a whole entire merch collection line to commemorate them closing. <laughs> for closing temporarily by the way not closing entirely temporarily closing they've got some merch that you can purchase from printworks so this is courtesy of their Insta instagram account it says to celebrate the closing season we're pleased to announce that the limited pieces of our official printworks of private accessories and previously only available to purchase in venue are now live on our website items include the highly sought after hoodies tees socks um, along with um, our limited edition bomber jacket, bespoke collaboration with Alpha Industries, designed exclusively for print works. The collection is available to pre-order now and you can buy it the link below. So they can't even, you know, it's not even available to buy and get it sent to you now. You have to pre-order it and wait, what, six weeks for it to be shipped to you, even though they knew way ahead of time that they were closing. They couldn't make this stuff ahead of hand. They couldn't invest in it and kind of make the, you know, make it and actually have the stock ready to go. They had to wait for you to give them the money so that they could purchase it and then they could get it sent to you. Absolutely heinous. And then checking some of the prices and the things available online. Yo, it's a little bit steep for what it is. So you got here Printworks Roller T with the kind of classic Printworks font that you know and love um, on the front and the rolling pan at the back, £35. You got some Printworks socks here for 15. You got a Printworks hoodie for 65. You got a Printworks football type of scarf, two tone for 25. And then you got a Printworks bomber jacket. And the thing that's funny about this bomber jacket, which I feel like is a real big and easy miss, they could have fixed up, right? If I'm looking at the bomber jacket, which I would never buy for that price, Printworks bomber jacket is fucking insane. But they could have won easily by having the embroidery of Printworks here on the back, which looks pretty well done. They should have been done in white. If you have this Printworks logo in white or in a massive print screen in white, it makes it a little bit more appealable, especially for people that it makes it more appealing. So especially people who want big, massive logos on their things. And it kind of reminds me a little bit of the XL recordings, the famous bomber jacket that they give to signed artists when they sign to XL recordings, right? Um, it's a massive, you know, big bomber jacket with massive XL written on the back. And considering what XL means to the culture and to music overall, it becomes a little bit of a incredible thing to kind of have, even if you're signed or even if you're just a fan of the music to kind of let people know what your vibe is, what your taste level is. And I feel like this bomber jacket could have worked so much better if they just switched the font to white. But instead, it's a tonal black and they're charging you £195. Are you insane? And then the same thing goes for the um, long sleeve. That's 40 Um They've got another t-shirt here in black again for 35 They've got a tote bag <laughs> for 25 Like, honestly, they are dragging this out. And they are fleecing the audience only to reopen again in 2026. So what are they going to do in 2026? Are they going to have Printworks reopening merch again with a date on it? Like absolutely crazy. Lanyard for tenor. Um, they've got a, a Printworks essential cat. I don't know why you're going to buy a, a, a hat with Printworks logo on it. And I think this kind of answers a little bit of my questions. I think I was mentioning before in previous podcasts, why don't clubs like Bergheim have more merch? I guess because Bergheim's got far more of a cooler rep. I'd probably wear those things more. But now I understand why they don't. Because in general, even if I would wear this stuff, it is still inherently uncool to be walking around with like club merch. You know, even if it was Studio 54 merch, it would still be incredibly lame to be walking around with a t-shirt that says Studio 54. Like you look like a real, real loser. Even more so walking around with a bomber jacket that says Printworks on it. What are you? Security? What are you? DJ? What are you? Team? No, I just found the club and I spent £195 on it. Absolutely crazy and heinous stuff. Especially when you consider it's not closed. It's temporarily closed. They're going to reopen again in 2026 in some capacity. So all of this hoopla around it makes absolutely no sense. 
um yeah what a what a what a weird one but it makes complete sense in some ways because they've been dragging out this closing they're not giving it up they don't just want to close and just move on it's all become a complete rollout and we won't hear the end of it so if you want it check it out it's available at shop.printworkslondon.co.uk if you need to check it out if you don't then i'll do apologize for absolutely boring you senseless with that horrendous news <laughs> moving on from that one i want to quickly talk about this this is regarding Resident Advisor's weird collaboration and sort of link up with Pickle Factory. Um, if you guys don't know, Pickle Factory is a club here in London that went through some crazy things recently where they lost their license because of alleged shooting, which is wild because in London or in the UK, we don't have any guns. You're not allowed to have guns. So the fact that somebody snuck a gun into a nightclub and let it off is a big problem, especially in that part of East London. But if you had been to pick a factory if you had been to oval space because it's all in the same sort of like you know building unit you would know that the security guards at this venue were absolutely shaky really shaky really aggressive really kind of over the top and it kind of was very obvious to me having gone there a few times that a few people that were local to the area were able to kind of get in with certain things by slipping people certain bits of money i may or may not have seen this and i may not have no direct account but that is what i'm kind of speaking about in vague terms so when this whole incidence of this shooting thing happened it wasn't really a big surprise to me a shooting happens at oval space at of pickup factory makes complete sense and them losing their license off the back of it also made sense because in general the staff there were treated like shit the, the security guards were pieces of shit and the vibe in there was that like, fucking horrible so if anything especially for me being a club guy it was one of the rare places where i was like you know what good riddance it was a bit of a shit place anyway i didn't really wasn't really that bothered when it had to close or lost this license but then all of a sudden you're seeing ra Resident Advisor, one of the leading dance music publications, linking up with Pickle Factory and doing these Pickle Thursdays type of things, essentially putting their arm around them and co-signing the venue. And I'm thinking to myself, what led to this? Why is this a situation? Why are they kind of co-signing a venue that never took their security seriously, never took the safety of the people attending the club seriously and had an occasion where somebody legitimately could have got shot inside of a club and lost their license rightfully, rightfully so because security were allegedly supposedly taking payments under the table wild resident advisor want to put their name alongside such a horrendous place why would you want to kind of get in bed with them in that regard it doesn't really make any sense to me i'm really kind of puzzled by it so if you are involved in the industry a little bit more than i am and you know what's going on you can provide some information as to what the deal is i'd love to know but considering pickle factory lost this license and over license for a very i felt like justifiable reasons to see ra linking up with them it just doesn't really make Make any sense to me so anybody knows information please provide it i would love to know i would really really love to know